Hello and welcome back to Bespoke Unit. In this video we will be reviewing Yves Saint Laurent L'Homme, an eau de toilette that was released in 2006. As always we will be using the Bespoke Unit fragrance formula as the basis of this review. You can find a blank copy of this on bespokeunit.com, there's a link below to fill out your own reviews. As I mentioned in the introduction, L'Homme was released in 2006 by the celebrated Rive Gauche Parisian fashion house Yves Saint Laurent. It's a woody aromatic featuring a number of, as you can guess, aromatic and woody notes plus a couple of others. Let's go through each phase by a direct application. Remember, two sprays on the back of the hand not too close to ensure you don't get too much alcohol, but not too far away to make a good dispersal. Let it just dry for a second so we don't get a full alcohol head in our face. The head is remarkably refreshing, consisting of bergamot, lemon and ginger notes. Nevertheless, it's quite delicate. It doesn't feature anything that gives it absolute substance, so we've got something quite light-hearted for now. The heart comes in very quickly. Uh, already we're getting some aromatic notes of basil, uh, some floral notes which I think are iris, although officially they're gardenia, and uh, we have some pepper notes. Now, uh, officially, again, this is white pepper. I think the white pepper is a bit of a misnomer. It could be black pepper, it could be pepper in general. It's not overly strong, but we do get this peppery backdrop which gives it at least some element of masculinity. Usually I cut to get to the base and I give it a couple of minutes, but here we're already at the base. This is a very quick life cycle. I'm already detecting elements of tonka bean, oak moss, vetiver and cedar wood. Um, this is quite a classic uh, blend, quite a classic bouquet. It's uh, woody, slightly ambery. Uh, we've got an earthiness from the tonka bean and from the oak moss. It's kind of sweet and a bit vanillary. That again is the tonka bean. However, it doesn't seem to have anything that really makes it shine, that seems to give it a huge, um, a huge length. Uh, it's not a very long flavoured uh, palette. Nevertheless, it's still quite pleasant. And we have a base with a plethora of notes that we're all quite familiar with. This means that it's quite a comforting fragrance. It's nothing extraordinary. Nevertheless, we are quite familiar with it. The tonka bean, as I said, adds a slight vanillary touch, so a slight warm on finish, and we're still getting elements from the head and heart. That said, since the life cycle is so quick, that's not very surprising. However, we might lose them somewhere down the line. In my opinion, we'll only be left with the cedar wood, uh, whilst the tonka bean, the oak moss, and the vetiver, vetiver have all but disappeared. With regards to the seasonality, it's hard to pinpoint an exact time of year that this is best suited for. Nevertheless, I could imagine it quite well during the milder months. It seems to be lacking that oomph that you'd want for something during winter, and nothing particularly oriental or too gourmand about it, despite the tonka bean presence. And during summer, it would probably fade away quite quickly due to perspiration, and its notes wouldn't be powerful enough to get through the heat. Therefore, it's something that's best suited for the milder months, so we're talking spring or early autumn. That said, it can be worn pretty much all year round. Let's talk about Yves Saint Laurent Lum's Wake and Strength. As I mentioned earlier, it features a very tight life cycle which gets through its different notes in a couple of minutes. Therefore, it's not hard to imagine that its longevity is very short as well. In fact, you could probably not get over three hours of wear from this. And during that last hour, you'll probably only get a faint whiff of cedar note. Therefore, this is something that is best used for short periods of time. For example, a date. We'll talk about that later in the impressions. With regards to the projection, it's also very tight. It's a very intimate fragrance, therefore. However, for the sillage, 
Here we have something that is quite impressive. It drops hints relatively regularly, but intermittently, and it can be smelled by passers-by. It's quite odd that it would have this, given that it has such a short longevity and such a tight projection. Yves Saint Laurent Lum's third-party feedback is generally positive, but not overwhelming. People enjoyed that it's pleasant bouquet, they found it quite enjoyable and very pleasant. However, they tended to find that it lacked a bit of personality and that it was a bit too short-lived. A very fleeting fragrance, as they said. In terms of demographic, I found that it performed best when uh, tested with younger people. Young women really enjoyed it, as did young men in their late teens. Therefore, this is probably a very useful fragrance. We'll talk about that later during the impressions. Our impressions of Yves Saint Laurent Lum, its wearability and high-level usage thoughts. As I mentioned earlier, this tended to fare best with young people. Therefore, I'd definitely put the demographic squarely in the 20s, 20 to 29. Men and women enjoyed it from their late teens up to their early 30s. However, its popularity dwindles after around 35. With regards to the time of day, much like the seasonality, this is a well-performing fragrance all around. It doesn't seem to have a particular personality that ties it to any particular time of day. So this could be worn in the morning, afternoon, evening or night with just about the same results. Next, in terms of the occasion that it's best suited for, I'd say that this is a romantic fragrance. Although it could be worn casually and even at the office, it seems to have certain traits that best suit it to dating. For example, it doesn't have a very overwhelming palette. Its blend is quite, not generic, it's pleasant enough, but it's nothing that is overly identifiable. Therefore, this might be a safe choice because the person standing in front of you or sitting in front of you won't be necessarily overwhelmed or put off by your choice of fragrance. Similarly, its short lifespan means that it can be worn throughout a date without it overperforming when things, let's hope, get a little bit more intimate. Even if it's just leaning in for a kiss, you don't want her to be blown away if you were wearing Aramis, for instance. And again, because it has a very tight projection, even when you first put it on, it will only be giving tantalizing hints when you sat across during dinner, but then give a bit more as you get a little bit closer. Finally, in terms of masculinity, Yves Saint Laurent Lum is a relatively faint fragrance, which is probably one of the contributing factors to why it's such a good choice for either dating or for young people. Young people will probably not want to wear that something that's overly masculine because it is too remarkable, too identifiable. Something like this is probably a lot easier to wear for their daily routine and their lifestyle. Similarly, it features a head and a heart, which I'd liken to actually a female fragrance. It's not until you get to the base and you experience the tonka bean and cedar wood that you realise this is genuinely a man's fragrance. Let's talk about Yves Saint Laurent Lum's presentation. Now the bottle is quite eye-catching. It features a hexagonal cap with the YSL initials written on it. And the bottle itself is a, is a cylindrical shape with Lum Yves Saint Laurent written in the brown's font. The atomizer performs very well and gives a generally even dispersal. However, the center of its cone tends to come along a much disproportionately thicker than the edges. Packaging is a nice reference to Yves Saint Laurent's heritage with these sort of 1960s influenced swirls on the side and it features the hexagon on the front and on the top. However, in terms of value for money, I must say that I was somewhat disappointed. Given that YSL is a designer brand, it's not surprising that it comes at a high price. $77 for 100 milliliters RRP to be precise. However, given that this is such a weak and low performing fragrance, if you were to use this for your daily wear, you'd be going through bottles quite quickly. Therefore, you'd end up be spending quite a lot. Fortunately though, you can find it at cheaper prices. A link below will take you to Amazon.com where you can find 100 milliliters for $65. Another link below, for Notino.com, 
will take you to a better price of $57 for 100 milliliters. To conclude, YSL Lum is by no means a bad fragrance. In fact, it's a very pleasant fragrance with plenty of aromatic, floral, and woody notes. It just seems to be lacking that memorable note, that elusive little thing that makes it unforgettable. Otherwise, it's a great fragrance for dating. It features a short longevity, a lifestyle that's perfect for a date, and is a safe choice because its bouquet has nothing, as I said earlier, that is overly memorable in the sense that it may be off-putting. In short, YSL Lum is a safe choice for any man. My name is Charles Philippe, that's all from me today. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment to let us know your thoughts, and subscribe for more in the future. We don't just do fragrances, do plenty more including watches and personal grooming. Be sure to head to bespokeunit.com and look, check the links below to see our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, take care.